The Keeneland September sale is a unique sale in that it has 4,500 horses that sell over approximately two weeks. And it's really unlike any sale in the world, and it requires kind of patience and viewing it like a marathon. My name is Jason Litt, and I'm with Solis Litt Bloodstock. I work with Alex Solis and Madison Scott, and we are out here at the Keeneland September sale, hunting down some hopefully very fast horses. First impressions uh, essentially go a long way. If you're gonna put it on a, a scale of 100 and a percentage, um, for me, that first impression is, uh, I would have to say, right at about 60%. I am Nick Hines, some of you may know me as the Sarge. I work as an analyst host at TVG as well as a bloodstock advisor at MyRacehorse.com. The nominator is trying to find uh, that game changer and within that game changer is trying to find, find value. Sometimes they, they don't end up being on the same page. Uh, you know, in particular, when you're looking at, at book one, you know, breaking it up into two sessions, uh, trying to find value and trying to find that game changer uh, it's a very difficult blend. The Keeneland September sale is comprised of six books. Book one, you get the best physical types and you get the best pedigrees. It's a combination of both, but you're going to have to pay for it as well. Book two, you're still getting those really nice physical types and you're also getting those nice pedigrees as well. And then when you get to book three to six, you get a little bit more bang for your buck. The reality is, is trying to find a physical that can match up with a pedigree, but once that physical matches up with a, a highlighted pedigree, then you can do the math. You can find a great horse from any book at the Keeneland September sale, even authentic. He came from book three. This is a projection. Obviously, you're looking at pedigree, but you're also looking at the athlete, too. But a lot of people compare, like, looking at a high school basketball player. Is he going to become the next Michael Jordan, or is he not? Hi, I'm Joe Mishak, Racing Operations Manager with My Racehorse. We started out discussing in, in the office, is this, are people going to like this idea? Are people going to want to participate with the micro-share concept? And when people kind of latched on to it, we said, what can we do next to, to take it to the next level? We want to compete in, on the biggest stages. We need to partner with the best people in the industry. Michael approached us about a year and a half ago. We set up a meeting with Mr. Hughes. He loved the concept. His uh, feeling is that this is something that can be bigger than the NFL. I'm Ned Toffey, General Manager at Spendthrift Farm. When we are partnering on a horse, it's very important that, that both parties are happy with uh, the individual. So Spendthrift has its own inspection team and my racehorse has its own inspection team. There are a lot of people that will look at a catalog, mark out horses that they want to see, but we're really coming at this from the approach of any horse can be a runner, so we look at everything. We separate out our team of three or four. We separate out into you know 150 horses a piece. We take a look at them, pretty much every horse um, offered for sale. Uh, we inspect them. Again, it's, it's, it's what we call form and function. But you, you kind of want to look at this like track and field, that the 100 and 200 meter dash, they have a different physical look than the 400 to 1500, and then the 1500 to uh, 10,000 meters, they're all different. And then of course, add in a different surface, they're really quite a variety of horses that exist. And then throw in new sires. So right now, you have a bunch of new sires that are coming in, Gun Runner, uh, air gate. So they're a, a completely new look that we've never seen before. When, when I'm evaluating horses, one of the most important things that I like to see is balance. When I look at balance, I'm sort of uh, drawing a line at, at about the withers on the horse. And I want to look at how much horses to the right of that line and how much horses to the left of that line. Do they have the, the makeup physically to what we think are going to withstand training? Are they, you know, proportional from the, the front to, to the withers, uh, their midsection, and then, uh, and then the back end. Um, how, how do they move, how do they walk? If there is some you know, conformational traits, which obviously there, there always is, no, you know, no horse is, uh, is perfect, uh, and if it is, you're gonna pay a lot of money for it. You like to see a reasonably correct horse. In, in other words, those limbs line up pretty well when that horse walks at you, uh, he comes at you, rather than being towed out or towed in too much. Obviously, by a book, of standards when you talk about horses being back at the knee, over at the knee, bench knee, offset, crooked, towing in, uh, sickle hocked, out in the hocks, uh, short back. There's so many sway back. There's so many different 
characteristics, but there are, there are so many horses in that mix that you can contend with. When you, you talk about the dynamics of a racehorse that hits at 5,000 pounds per square inch, if a horse is back at the knee, just imagine sitting at a table and the table is a little crooked as far as the legs and the more weight you put on top of that table, the chances are it won't withstand that. Really at the end of the day, you're looking for an animal that gives you that kind of tingly feeling in your stomach. And that's really so much of this. The, the beauty of the game is there's a science to it. And clearly, the, you look at, have a vet look at them and make sure they're sound. There are companies that will scan their hearts to see how their heart looks. There are companies that do a biometric analysis. No horse is perfect. And so it's very important that we have a vet that works with us in pointing out all of the imperfections that we can live with. We like to see a good functioning throat on a horse, and your throats are difficult to evaluate. They can change dramatically in a short period of time. But understanding what you can live with and what you can't live with, and a good veterinarian is really key in that process. Same thing with evaluating the x-rays. These horses' ankles, knees, hocks, and stifles are all x-rayed, those, all those films are on file here for our veterinarians to examine. But then there's also the art of this, and this isn't a science completely. There's a lot of feel, there's a lot of gut feeling, and there's a lot of looking at the animal and gauging, do you think this thing will fight for you? Because at the end of the day, we're looking for athletes, and you want a horse that's gonna wanna compete. There are many things that could come up in a vet report. For example, Justify, I believe he sold here at Keeneland for half a million dollars. If he had a perfect vet report, you probably could have multiplied that by four easily. When we determine a budget on a given individual, we're looking at the pedigree, the confirmation. Uh, we'll go back and we'll look at the sales averages for that sire, uh, the sales history for the dam, and we'll use those numbers to come up with a price range. At this point in time, the market is overcompensating for age of mares. It used to be people didn't worry about that, but now if you notice the prices, a lot of these young mares are having their offspring bring premium dollar because they're, they're thinking that there's a, there's a plus in that. So we're looking at it from a standpoint of that might be a really good value play to get an older mare that's proven she can get it done. Being a, a McDonald's All-American Band finalist, uh, March is essentially what I know. So when I see a horse coming to the back ring, I'm looking for cadence. I'm looking for horses that don't break cadence. I'm looking for horses that are not rattled by the noise, nor bothered by the people that surround them, nor the other horses that are here. So what I see there needs to happen in this ring as far as not breaking cadence. And if they can march up there without breaking cadence, then I'm on to the next phase. Once they get up there and get in the ring, you want to be aware of who else may be bidding on this horse. You've got a price in mind. We usually set a max number uh, that we go in there with. And you know you wanna make sure that you're gonna get at the best price that you can. It is absolutely a poker match because the seller's job from a consigner standpoint is to identify the buyers and that's gonna dictate where they might put a reserve. So the last thing you wanna do is let them know that you love this horse because they might go to a, the owner and say, hey, so lease let's on it. Those guys are willing to spend a lot of money. Let's bump the reserve. So there's a lot of jockeying and bluffing and faking people out. And there are enough bidding spots at Keeneland. You can really kind of hide it. Feels a little bit like game day. You get a little excited, uh, especially when you've got a, a, you think a really special horse coming into the ring. Um, but you've got a job to do and you want to make sure you go, go about it in the best way to get that horse and, and get it for the best price that you can. Oftentimes the bidding is, if it's moving very quickly, as a bidder you may want to try to slow it down a little bit. If the auctioneer sense too much enthusiasm, uh, you may be prone to uh, that price uh, jumping up on you a little bit. Here's the music, the end I have in the back, 360,000. Nothing better than to try to fake someone out. You end up buying it and they come around and see you signing the ticket and think, oh man, we didn't know that was you guys. 
when you sign a ticket throughout the process, it's equivalent to being in the winner circle. There's no better feeling. It's an adrenaline rush, and uh, the sky's the limit. It is a great feeling for a moment, and then you realize you need to be right because th this is just the start. At buying the horse is essentially buying a lottery ticket. The amount of the lottery ticket is you know, the hammer price and everyone else in here recognizes that, wow, if it was a lot of money, that was a pretty good horse, but then they need to run. So it's kind of, it's great, but then you realize, oh geez, now, now it all starts.